You're playing Sod Rogue all wrong. If you play Rogue in Season of Discovery, chances are you've been playing a spec that looks like this. I'm gonna show you how to spec a roll with 16 points because you're too fucking dumb to spec it by yourself. First of all, you go in here and you put 3 fucking points in improved gouge. Then after that, it's too promising to strike or maybe in evasion. It's up to you, my little piece of shit. After that, obviously, we go in improved backstab and why not 2 points so I can get the improved, improved sprint. And after that, I go in here, opportunity, and I get 4 points. Fuck is it the lair? Or maybe even like this. So basically this spec, I think, to be honest, is one of the, the greatest spec that you can get overall. So it's sadly a sword spec, and you go hit boss. <laughs> what if I told you I have a spec that will bring you much more success in both PvE and PvP guaranteed? This is your last chance. After this, there is no turning back. You leave the video. You wake up in your bed and believe whatever you want to believe. Or, you watch the video, you stay till the end, and you learn to play the rogue as it was truly meant to be played. Now we all know you can't have a good rogue PvP build without a good stun. Between the Eyes is the best thing we have available right now, and we're also going to take advantage of the fact that it's a ranged attack that uses your ranged weapon. Quick Draw is one of our strongest tools right now as a rogue in PvP. Quick Draw allows us to maintain control over our opponent by applying a 50% slowdown effect for 6 seconds and allows us to deal damage and build combo points from a distance. It also is useful to prevent people from running away. A lot of rogues are running Deadly Brew right now in PvP, but in my opinion it's strictly a PvE rune because the damage over time from Deadly Poison will break important crowd control effects. This build is all about big burst and crowd control, not consistent damage. Mutilate is the bread and butter of this PvP build. Mutilate is the biggest and hardest hitting attack available to rogues right now in Sod. Not only does Mutilate do way more damage than Saber Slash, Sinister Strike, or Backstab, it also generates twice as many combo points. The tricky thing about Mutilate is that it has a high energy cost, so you'll have to manage your energy carefully. But don't worry, you'll be a mutilate master by the end of the video. The best runes we have right now for PvE are Saber Slash, Deadly Brew, and Invenom, and we'll be using the same talent points for both PvE and PvP. So we're going to put all of our talent points into the combat tree right now. We're not going to put anything into assassination or subtlety yet. We're going to start with improved gouge. This is going to turn our gouge into a 5.5 second incapacitate. Gouge is a crucial part of this build in PvP. It gives one combo point, has a reasonable energy cost, and gives us time to heal, gain distance, recharge energy, or even eat, re-stealth, and or run away. We're going to put two points into Improved Sinister Strike, and the reason we do this is because it'll also reduce the energy cost of our Quick Draw, and we're going to put three points into Improved Backstab. The reason we do this is because it's also going to increase the Critical Strike chance of our Mutilate, and the big thing with this build is that we're going to put five points into Precision. The reason we do this is because the PvP ability hit cap is actually 5%, and what this means is that it will stop your important abilities like gouge or mutilate from missing. So if you've been uh, doing PvP and a lot of your special attacks have been missing, this is probably the reason why. And we're going to put two points into improved sprint. This is going to give us another escape ability. And we're going to put our last point into dual wield specialization. This is a highly underrated talent that is going to increase the damage of both mutilate and your auto attack damage. Um, auto attacks are really important and really underrated in this, especially at this level, um, especially in PvE too. Uh, just to put it into perspective, uh, I want to show you guys a uh, damage breakdown from one of the bosses in Black Fathom Deeps. And uh, as you can see, 50% of my damage actually came from melee auto attacks. So uh, auto attacks are very, very important.
Since we're using Mutilate, we need a dagger in each hand. The best main hand dagger is Meteor Shard, hands down. Meteor Shard drops from the last boss in Shadowfang Keep and can be farmed repeatedly until acquired. The reason we use Meteor Shard is because it has a random chance for a free fire blast whenever you mutilate, gouge, or auto attack. The reason we use Meteor Shard in our main hand is because that is the only way that it will work with gouge. The damage from Meteor Shard does not break gouge and it doesn't apply any damage over time which means that it won't break any other crowd control effects. The damage from Meteor Shard is not dependent on agility or attack power, which means we can put more stats into stamina to increase our survivability against both melee and casters. When Meteor Shard's damage lines up with our bursts, we can kill people very fast. The best ranged weapon for this build is Venom Strike. Venom Strike drops from Lord Serpentis in Wailing Caverns and again can be farmed repeatedly until acquired. The reason we use Venom Strike is because it has a random chance for big nature damage which is activated by not only normal bow shots but also quick draw and between the eyes. Again, this sort of damage is not dependent on agility or attack power which allows us to put more stats into stamina to increase our survivability against both melee and casters. When Venom Strike lines up with our burst, we can kill people very fast. When you're doing Wailing Caverns to get the bow, you should also try to get the leggings of the fang and the gloves of the fang. When these two items are combined, they provide a big increase to the damage of the Venom Strike bow's effect. Best weapons, regardless of weapon type. Use your highest damage weapon in the main hand because it affects the damage of Saber Slash. Make sure you're looking at damage, not DPS, when comparing the two. In hand, this is going to give us a chance for random instant damage on our Mutilate, Gouge, and Auto Attacks. And if you read closely in the Mutilate description, you'll see that the damage is increased by 20% against poison targets. Instant poison does not cause somebody to be considered a poison target, so for our offhand, we're going to want to either use crippling or mind-numbing poison. I think mind-numbing poison is the obvious choice here, because we already have a slow effect from quick draw, and mind-numbing gives us an additional utility against casters, and it will still apply the debuff to give us an increased mutilate damage against both melee and casters. In PvE, you're going to want to use instant poison on both hands to maximize your damage from deadly brew. Before we go any further, you must have an add-on to track energy ticks. This will allow you to maximize the damage in your burst and to play more efficiently overall as a rogue. Two good add-ons to do this are Ice HUD and Nug Energy. I prefer to use Ice HUD because it allows you to track other things as well. In order to do the full burst one-shot rotation, you're also going to need Thistle T. Thistle T is an on-use item that instantly restores 100 energy when used. Thistle T can be purchased on the auction house or crafted with cooking. The cooking recipe can be looted in dungeons or acquired through a rogue quest chain. The rotation for this build is really quite simple. First, build 4 to 5 combo points with mutilate, quick draw, and gouge while you kite or chase down the enemy. Ideally, you will have applied mind numbing poison by now, allowing mutilate to deal 20% increased damage in your burst. Then, we'll wait for full energy. Keep waiting until the energy is about to tick again, and then we'll press between the eyes, mutilate, thistle T, mutilate, and eviscerate. Yeah, As you can see, the combo hits quite hard, and if they're not dead yet, you should be able to finish them off quite easily. It's a good idea to open with evasion, get slice and dice up, and stay on target and do as many auto attacks as possible while you wait for your energy to recharge, and then again, you'll wait till the energy is going to tick, 
and then you'll press between the eyes, mutilate, thistle tea, mutilate, eviscerate. Another pro tip against warriors is to put up a bleed with rupture, slow them with quick draw, and move far enough away from them that they can't hit you, but stay close enough that they can't press charge. They'll slowly die to your bleed as they watch you walk away. This is also known as dead zoning, and is a great way to ruin any warrior's day. If you really want to maximize your toolkit as a rogue, you need engineering bombs. They deal damage and stun all targets in a small area. They're great to use when you need to stop someone in place, interrupt a spell while kick is on cooldown, or finish someone off when your energy bar is empty. One highly slept on item that you may not know about is Magic Dust. Magic Dust can put your target to sleep for up to 20 seconds from up to 30 yards away. This is like a blind replacement for rogues and sod right now, but better because it lasts for 20 seconds instead of 7. Magic Dust is amazing. It can turn a 2v1 into a fair fight, or turn a losing 1v1 into utter domination of your opponent. Well that's it for the video guys. Uh, if you made it this far, I really appreciate it. Please press like and subscribe, and let me know your reaction in the comments below. Um, Peyo, if you're watching this, I uh, hope I didn't clown you too hard. I actually got a lot of love for you, bro. Um, if you haven't already, go check out Peyo on Twitch. He's a super dedicated, super entertaining guy. Um, come check me out as well. Zorbo TV. We're going to be doing live giveaways. Lots of wow and lots of sod. Uh, come hang out. Appreciate it, guys. See you on the next one.